Join us now for part two of Godly Principles found in Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse. The Bible does say, and us in an effort for us to return to God's principle, he said, if my people would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, talking about God, that I will hear from heaven, I will turn and I will forgive their land. I will forgive them and I will heal them, uh, uh, so to speak. So God always put in place that whenever we void or vacate the following of his principles, he always sets in order the standard in the way that we can return to him with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, and with all of our mites. Even recently, and I've been, I've been very candid with the messages that I posted, uh, and that I'm constantly looking and examining my life, uh, even errors and things that I have done or said to people, and I'm always confessing those things, and I'm always seeking opportunity to even be in the company or even have conversations uh, with those in whom I, they may have felt as though they may have been offended by my actions or my deeds so that I can uh, communicate uh, to them by f willing to ask for forgiveness and, that, and to be forgiven and that in like turn that they would want to do the same um, because I am very serious about my relationship with the Lord. I'm uh, not going to even profess that I'm perfect. I'm like the Apostle Paul, forgetting those things which are behind me, but I press towards the mark of a high calling, which is in God, in Jesus Christ. But I'm pressing towards that mark, towards being perfected. And I'm encouraging you that even every pastor or minister that you sit under, they're pressing forward to be made perfected in God. Yes, we all have flaws and, and things in our lives that we are struggling with. But that struggle should not overcome our love and our desire to be made whole in the eyesight of God. And you'll not get people that will be very candid with you. And that's a travesty because we all are human. Not that we are the practitioners of sin. But when we find that there is sin in our lives, we're applying ourselves to the godly principles that we've learned so that we will not make that error again. And we're professing and confessing our faults and sins before the Lord, which is one of the major principles of God's word. Now, also one of the principles is that we use good, sound judgment. And that we be fair in all of our dealings. And sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not always fair and above board and honorable in our dealings. Sometimes we do use an unjust balance and an unjust weight. And when we look at people, we don't take the time to understand them and why they may be feeling the way that they feel. One of the principles that I share when I counsel husbands and wives that are experiencing difficulties is that you must take the time to talk to each other instead of talking at each other, which slays the foundation for anger and bitterness to breed because you're throwing a bunch of words and what your desire is of and even your selfish ambitions and goals at that person. Other than taking the time to fully understand their feelings and their emotions and securing them in a comfort zone or safety where they won't feel as vulnerable and open to an attack or even to feel as though they're losing an advantage. In our conversations, we always want someone to feel as though you always have a choice and there is an advantage. That's why compromising, not ungodly compromising, but compromising in a marriage or a relationship is always the best way to handle things. And understanding the person's emotions and feelings 
and why they feel the way that they do and put yourselves in their shoes. Uh, and one of the things that is very important is not to become argumentative with that person because if you fully take the time to understand them employing a godly principle, then you would understand them. God takes the time to understand us. As a matter of fact, the scriptures say for us to boldly come to the throne of grace that we might find help in our time of need. It also talks about Jesus in the book of Hebrews, him being the great high priest, not because he was appointed into a position, but because he came to earth and was tempted on every single point as we were as men and are. So he is fully able to understand what we're going through. When, and when we're approaching him and our times of need, he knows the strong toes of temptation. He knows the strong spirit of influence that comes along with it. He knows how easy it can be for a human to yield to temptation and, and go down the wrong path. He understands the, the onslaughts of the enemies through the thought processes of man and how temptation doesn't come with a brief second, but it comes continually. We are barraged, but barely, we are bombarded with thoughts on a daily basis of things that we can find to do illy and that are sinful in nature. But when we come boldly to the throne of grace, he understands us. Even the Bible says in Hebrews that he is an advocate for us. He is an advocate between us and the Father that even when Satan, Lucifer, accuses us before the Father, he defends us as a lawyer in a courtroom that is proper to, properly and well prepared in our defense and can eloquently and adequately and professionally with wisdom and grace defend us and communicate wisely and get his thoughts across to the point that it can convince a judge of our innocence. That's why it's so important that the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sin and all wickedness, come into our lives. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that even when it comes time to partake of the Lord's Supper, which many churches practice communion, on the first Sunday of the month because they want you to have a clear conscience as you go through the month. But the Bible also says that many that partake of it are sickly because they're not discerning the Lord's body, which is the key principle in taking the Lord's Supper. That when you take on the broken bread, or the, which is symbolism of the body of Jesus Christ, that you're taking of his body that was broken or given for us for our transgressions and our sins. Even as in the Old Testament when an animal was presented at the temple and slaughtered for the sacrifice for the eradication of sin or the sinful nature of the person who brought it. And the cleansing of the blood was to cleanse and to wash them, which means that Jesus Christ's life was above reproach. He knew no sin. He did not sin. He is the only perfect man that ever walked the face of the earth. But he's unable to understand us. And when we take his blood, what we're taking is, is the perfection of his life into our lives, asking it to cleanse us from all sins and heal us from all wrong, from all sicknesses and diseases. But when we take it not discerning, or discerning means to know completely, to understand, and to comprehend within one's soul or body that we're partaking of his body and of his blood, when we take it not recognizing what it is or fully understanding, the scriptures say that we drink damnation to ourselves. And that's why so many of us are sickly in the body of Christ. Not only sickly in body, medically, but also mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. That's why if you're not properly prepared to partake, it's okay to say, no, I can't do so because I've got some things that I've got to get right first. But if you're going to take it 
and you're going to repent and examine yourself before you take it, then that means that you should not go back into that sin. So let us continue with principles. So also it means to that we owe no man but to love him. If you owe someone, pay them, pay your bills. If you're behind or struggling, do what you can, communicate effectively. If you need to seek out legal help or aid or, or help because you've fallen upon hard times and you just can't meet your obligations, communicate, get someone that can help you. There's no shame in seeking help. And even emotionally, uh, even if you're having struggles, there's no shame to get help. Seek psychiatric care or counseling. Uh, again, as I stated on last week, in the multitude of counsels, there is wisdom. Perhaps someone could give you an insight on what you're going through that you've not considered that can help you through a difficult time. And of course, I want to strongly encourage you to pray. To seek the Lord with all of your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your might. Because prayer ultimately turns things over. Many, many, many years ago, I was going through something very difficult. And dealing with some emotional things and issues. To the point that uh, a doctor was going to give me a medication uh, over a period of days. And I knew that I didn't want to uh, take that. So I went on a fast for about a week. And the Lord broke that thing over my life where I didn't need that. But that was through fasting and praying. But the scriptures say, but these things go off not out, but by fasting and prayer. Sometimes you have to devote yourself to fasting and prayer. The thing is, how desperately do you want something from God? And in that, you must learn to forgive because some of our issues are attached to our inability or lack of ability to forgive others. And listen, some of us need to forgive ourselves. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. Because we're holding our mistakes and our shortcomings and our failures at heart. And let me tell you something. In this life, you're going to have disappointments. You're going to have failures. Even those that are wealthy or seeming as though they're the happiest people in the world have difficulties. They have struggles. They have disappointments. And they have days and times that they don't feel like being bothered because they know that they've made errors, but they made up in their minds that they would get up and keep moving and keep pressing forward to find those things that pleases God that they will never find themselves in that state again. And you must make up in your mind that even in the midst of your failures and your difficulties, that you're going to get up and keep progressing forward with the attitude that I will not fall victim to this ever again. Also, make no oaths. Make no promises that you cannot honor or stand by which is a godly principle, if you know that you can do it, then commit to it. If you know that you're not going to be able to follow through or only go a certain distance with it, you should elo or you should adequately communicate that so that there are no misunderstandings because a lot of times, because we commit ourselves to things and cannot keep up with it, we actually enter into a situation that causes disgrace and then anger and disappointment to come.